you know, I think all too often business people are cave dwellers. They get up in the morning, they're in this large cave with a big screen TV. They go out to their garage, they get into a little cave with four wheels called their car. They drive to this other really big cave with uh, computers called their office. They stay there all day long, and at the end of the day, they get back into their little cave with four wheels, and they drive back to their large cave with a big screen TV, and they can't figure out why no one is referring them. Well, networking is a contact sport. You have got to go out and meet people if you want to build your business through referrals. And I know, I know that's got to be difficult for uh, bookkeepers. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer. Today's guest is a man who CNN once called the father of modern networking. He is the founder of the incredibly successful networking organization, Business Network International, or BNI for short. Dr. Ivan Meisner, welcome to the podcast. It's an honor to have you. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be on. And, you know, it's it's one thing to be called the father of modern networking, but when they start calling me the grandfather of modern networking, then I'm going to really be worried. Hey, there you go. Exactly. You must be very proud of what you've created and the impact that you've had on so many small and medium-sized business owners around the planet. Can you tell us a little bit about your career journey leading up to creating Business Networking International? Yeah, BNI. BNI was really, it's a great example of necessity being the mother of invention. Uh, I was 28 years old. I started my own consulting practice. Uh, I was looking for referrals for my consulting practice. One of the people who I had been working with and referring was, in fact, uh, an accountant. And so I uh, wanted to deepen that relationship and develop other relationships. And I was really dissatisfied with the kinds of groups that I was uh, seeing as I was going out there networking. On one hand, there were very social groups. They were all about the social interaction, the wine and the hors d'oeuvres <laughs> in the evening. And, and, and I wasn't seeing any business really being done. And then on the other hand, there were biz some business groups that were just mercenary. It was very transactional and it wasn't really about building relationships. And I didn't really like either of those. And so I, I formed BNI as a way of kind of merging those two concepts, having an organization that was very relational, but at the same time was focused and had accountability. We don't teach this in colleges and universities anywhere in the world. We don't teach networking or referral marketing. And so we kind of developed this industry and tried to do it in a way that combined both of those together. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's interesting that you mention that it's not done in universities or or even really in and where it should start is in high schools. Um, right. And I think that's what created such an opportunity for such a large large organization. How how large is BNI now? Well, as of this morning, we have uh, 7,876 chapters in about 72 countries with over 213,000 members worldwide. Wow. You know, the reason why I'm so excited to have you on the show is that it's one of the, the things that we would say is almost essential to building a successful bookkeeping practice is to be involved in some sort of a networking group. and you know, our founder of our company, Pure Bookkeeping, and as well the author, co-author of The e -Myth Bookkeeper, she actually met the, a business coach at a BNI that w helped her then put together the strategies and the mindset and everything else that she needed in order to grow her business to the level that she did, which was a remarkable and extremely successful business. So the core uh, of our history really is around BNI, and we talk about it 
I mean, we're talking about BNI all over the world, really. And did you ever think that it would be something that would cross the whole globe impacting all of these businesses? You know, I'd like I'd like to tell you that I had this vision of an international business when I started BNI, but I didn't. Um, I needed some referrals for my consulting practice, and I put together friends, and I wanted to help them. And I hoped that they would want to help me. And what I discovered was that because we don't teach this in colleges and universities, uh, it went over really well. And it was really kind of funny because I, I networked up. I brought in people who I felt were more successful than me. Every single person in that first group that I invited uh, had been in business longer than I had, all of them. And they were almost all older than I am and had more experience. And I brought them in because I thought they knew how to network. <laughs> Turns out they joined because I was a business consultant and they thought I knew how to network. <laughs> we sat wow. in a room and it's like none of us really understood the process. And that's when I say that's when I said, you know, we kind of developed an industry. Uh, we did. We 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 learned how to do this together. So no, I didn't see it as an international organization. That I think that came after really after about a year of doing this. In in one year, we we opened 20 groups by accident. And we 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 opened it by accident because people kept coming to me and saying, wow, this is great. I I, I love it, but I can't join because as you know, we only take one person per profession. And so they said, well, I can't join because my profession is represented. Would you help me open up my own group? And you know, the first one I said, no, <laughs> this isn't what <laughs> wow. I do. I'm not a business, I'm not a I'm not a networking guy, I'm a business consultant. And she convinced me that it was really consulting to do this. And so I said, okay, and we opened the second one and the same thing happened over and over and over again. So I think about a year into it, I realized I had struck a chord in the business community that I, I knew I had the problem, I didn't realize everybody had the problem. Wow. You know, interesting how sliding doors, right? If you would have said no to that, it would have been uh, a different path. So, so interesting Listen, how these... That is a fantastic uh, analogy, Sliding Doors, the movie. Um, <laughs> we have a chapter in, oh, I think it's in Portugal or Spain that did a short video based on Sliding Doors for b and I. I mean, short, it's like three, four minutes long. And it's exactly what you described there with how BNI is a sliding door where it's a nexus point where you could go one direction or the other. If I can find that video, I'll send you the link. It's, Please a, do. it's a great short video and it's all, no words are spoken. It, 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 not a single word. It's all uh, just uh, action on camera. That's very cool. Please, I hope you can find that because, first of all, I love that movie and I love the the imagery and the and what it represented. And I think it'd be very cool to actually post that on our on our website. But it's a kind of a it takes us down kind of a cool, unexpected conversation in that going outside of your door every day really is a sliding door experience. And the movie, if if the listeners, if you don't know what sliding door is, go find that video and watch the the movie. It's a great movie. I think Gwyneth Paltrow was in it. Yes. Just a, the the power of the choices that we make. And so if we walk out of the door in the morning and versus staying at home, then there's going to be something different happening in our lives because we know we walk through that door. Very mm -hmm. interesting around BNI, you're every single week you're literally opening up an opportunity by just simply going and meeting with people who are ambitious and want to grow their business. That's absolutely right. You know, I think all too often business people are cave dwellers. They get up in the morning, they're in this large cave with a big screen TV. They go out to their garage, they get into a little cave with four wheels called their car. They drive to this other really big cave with uh, computers called their office. They stay there all day long, and at the end of the day, they get back into their little cave with four wheels, and they drive back to their large cave with a big screen TV, and they can't figure out why no one is referring them. Well, networking is a contact sport. You have got to go out and meet people if you want to build your business through referrals. And I know, I know that's got to be difficult for uh, bookkeepers. Um, you know, I'm reasonably familiar with the behavioral style that you see, because when I was a consultant, a lot of the work I did was in behavioral styles and learning 
about different people and what their styles were. And what, and bookkeepers like programmers tend to be much more analytical and not necessarily, well, they tend to be a little more introverted. Would that be a fair statement to say, yeah, Mike? Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I, listen, I think what I teach is perfect, really, for introverts. And, and I'll tell you why. Because, listen, I- introverts tend to be much better at listening than just walking up and talking to people. And that's actually a strength. A good networker has two ears and one mouth and uses them both proportionately. Okay? A good networker has two ears and one mouth and uses them both proportionately. There's this assumption that to be a good networker, you have to just go, you you know, you have to walk around and say, hi, hi, Michael, I'm Ivan, let's do business. And when in fact, just the opposite, what we have found over and over and over again is that people who are good at listening are better networkers. I just did a survey of 3,000 people online. I published it at Entrepreneur just um, a few weeks ago. The number one characteristic of a great networker, number one, was a strong listener. Wow. Now, introverts have it made on that. They tend to be much a much better listener than an extrovert. Extroverts love talking. And what's their favorite subject? Themselves. And so they talk and they talk a lot about themselves. Whereas a good networker should be like, you are here, Michael, as an interviewer. You're asking me questions and I'm allowed time to expound on that. And, and that's actually a skill set that works great to be a fantastic networker. And so I think bookkeepers, their challenge is in meeting people. They're uncomfortable maybe walking up and meeting people. And so there's, I have a couple of suggestions for, for people in that area. But in, in basically, I think introverts can make a stronger networker. I love it. These are what I like to call value bombs. And uh, you're dropping a whole bunch of them, which is, which is excellent. And, you know, what you're doing is you're inspiring bookkeepers that maybe have not, you know, because going and, and meeting a whole bunch of new people might even be daunting. Uh, but yeah. you're inspiring them to think, hey, you know what? You, The listeners have a bit of a superpower here that's going to work well by going into an environment like BNI. Now, when they get there, they're yeah. great at listening. How do they get the opportunity to listen? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you, you want to assess the room when you walk in. Take a look at it. You will immediately see people standing in open twos or closed twos. Now, it's kind of difficult to describe uh, just on audio the difference between an open and a closed two. But imagine that you put your two hands together, almost like you're praying, and separate them by a couple of inches. That That's two people. Let's say you have the God view. You're looking down on them. That's two people standing perpendicular to each other, talking to one another. It's very difficult to break into that conversation. Now, imagine that you, you put the two palms of your hand together, and your hands now shaped like a V. And you're looking down at people talking and you see that V, that's called an open to. It's much, it's much easier to strike a conversation with people who are standing in an open two than a closed two. Now, now extend that to a, a closed three, that would look like a triangle from above. But an open three would look like a U. So what you want to do is you walk into the room and the first thing you want to do is open, you want to assess the open groups the groups that are standing in an open stance because they are very easy for you to just kind of slide in. You don't have to say anything. You can just kind of slide in, nod, and while they're continuing the conversation, at some point they're going to look to you, say hello, and then that's your opportunity to introduce yourself and ask them each what they do and get them to talk. So when you walk into a room, look for open twos and open threes. There's two places you can find this in my books. You can find this in in my book uh, called Networking Like a Pro, which is on Amazon. And you can also find it in World's Best Known Marketing Secret. But Networking Like a Pro is on Amazon. Anybody can pick that up and see the graphs that I'm talking about. That's the first thing. The second thing is that whenever possible, go to networking meetings with somebody that you know who knows people at that group. So let's say, Michael, I were going to go with you to a meeting, and it's a meeting that you know many of the people. I would ask you, would you mind, Michael, what kind of walking me around and introducing me to people so that I can 
get the lay of the land and I can meet people. You know, can I, can I just be by your shoulder and have you walk around and, and maybe as you meet people, you know, introduce me. Now, if I'm an introvert, that's a great technique because I don't have to walk up to anybody. I got you doing it for me. And you walk up, you walk up to, you know, Janet and you say, Janet, hi, it's great to see you again. Let me introduce you to my friend, Ivan. And then I, I can strike up a conversation with Janet or whoever else based on you making that introduction, that third party introduction. There's two techniques that work amazingly well for introverts. This is amazing. I just absolutely love this. And I've never heard the examples that you've used around, you know, the hands and, and the, you know, the open and looking for those types of groups. I mean, I, I'm an amivert, so I, I love being on my own and doing my own thing, but I can, I can go and, you know, thrive in, a, in an environment. But when I go and network, I, you know, it's not my thing. And it's, I'm, I go in and it's like, if I get into a conversation, I can have a great conversation, but I've never thought about it from this open, looking for the body language cues yeah. to know where to actually go. Because I, I do like having questions and I, uh, I do like listening to people and I'm curious, so it's all good. But for me, I'm getting a ton of value out of this. And I'm thinking now too, this is going to be a bit of an open loop here because I love the, um, the slogan, I don't know if it's a slogan, but the, let's call it a um, philosophy of giver's gain. Yeah. But for me, giver's gain is when I'm in a group that I know there's other people that maybe aren't comfortable, I'm going to look, how am I standing? What body language am I giving that will enable other people to come up and connect with me? I mean, that's kind of part of this, another way of looking at it, right? If I'm at a networking group, right. why don't I just make me one of those people that's easily accessible and do the open Make sure my cues are, already, are always open, whether I'm standing with one person or in a group. Right. And, and you can do that easily by just opening up your stance. So if you're standing perpendicular to somebody, you open it up a little bit. So you, you open it to a V and then somebody will fill that pretty quickly. Then it's really important to open it up again so that other people can come in. Uh, you do simple techniques like that. Are, they're, they're, they're simple, but very effective. And they're the kind of thing that are very subconscious. People don't even realize you're doing it. But there are other things that you can do that are certainly much more uh, conscious. One is to be a connector. Hmm. And and uh, I think anyone, introvert or extrovert, can be a great connector by linking people together who need each other's services. And one of the best ways to do that is, of course, like I said, is to listen to people, get them to talk and to tell you who they are and, and what they do. I think Here's where networking goes wrong, Michael. People use networking as a face-to-face -face cold calling opportunity. So they go to these networking meetings and they're trying to sell, sell, sell. I did a presentation in London a few years back and there were about 900 people in the room. And I said to everybody there, I said, how many of you are here? Raise your hands. If you're hoping to, it was an all-day affair. If you're hoping to, you know, at some point today, sell something. 900 people raised their hands. Wow. I said, okay, great. I said, how many of you here today, if you answer this question for me, um, how many of you are here today hoping to possibly buy something? No one <laughs> raised their hand. Wow. Not one single person. This is what I call the networking disconnect. People show up at networking meetings wanting to sell, but nobody is there to buy. Hmm. And, and that's why people go to networking meetings, especially introverts, and they feel like they need to get a shower when they go home. Because they've been sold to, sold to, sold to. And that's not, to me, that's not what networking is all about. That's that's direct selling. And to me, networking is about building relationships. And that means you need to have conversations with people. And so, and you need to look for opportunities to help and connect them, which kind of comes full circle to what I was talking about. You've got to be a connector. People will seek you out at networking meetings if they know you know everybody. If you've helped them before, they'll they'll seek you out to connect with you again. If you are a connector and are helping others, uh, when you go to networking meetings, people want to talk to you. Beautiful. Uh, I have a business partner that is an incredible connector, and he's just very curious, and he loves people, and he's, you know, some people might not get him right away because he's he's really has no problem going into a room and meeting every single person, but he really wants to know who you are, what's going on in your life, and what you do, what your superpower is. And he literally, he's got a mind, it's like a photographic memory. He will 
literally say, oh, you need to work with this person. I need to connect you with that person. And surprisingly enough, I mean, he's a very good salesperson because he's so well connected and he's driving business to all these other people that are just not even connected to him really at all. So it's very powerful. But can you talk a little bit about that mindset that's needed to actually be thinking strategically like that in one's yeah. life? Yeah, well, there's there's a couple of things. First of all, I think the foundation of everything I teach is uh, based on what I call the VCP process. The VCP process, it stands for visibility, credibility, profitability. You must first be visible in the community. People have to know who you are and what you do. So you have to go out there and be recognized. You then have to establish credibility. And that's where people know who you are. They know what you do and they know you're good at it. Now, they may know you're good at it because they've used your service and they know you're good or they've observed you uh, operating or they know people who know you and they've said, wow, man, Michael's really good at what he does. And so, you know, over time, you build this reputation. That's the reputation builder. And it is over time. This is one of the things that people really get wrong is that they think that networking is a get rich quick scheme. It is not. It is a solid foundation for building a long-term successful business. But um, there's something that I I write about in in Networking Like a Pro called the time confidence curve. That no matter what business you're in, it's going to take a certain amount of time before people have confidence in your ability to provide a quality product or service. So you've got to go into this understanding that time confidence curve. Now, for bookkeepers, that time confidence curve is not short, not like a, a florist. You know, someone might refer a florist pretty quickly. Are you talking about a bookkeeper? Somebody who's managing my money? That's on the outside of the of the curve. You know, the only one that might be further out might be uh, might be the, a financial planner investing in your retirement money. So they're probably a little further out. So what does this tell you? This tells you if you're a bookkeeper, it's all about building the relationship because nobody's going to hand over their books to you until they trust you or until somebody refers you that they trust because that trust kind of has a it has the ability to rub off on on uh, uh, via a third party yeah you know what's fantastic that you brought that up because i think that's often not discussed in terms of the sensitivity that people feel around money and and a bookkeeper is dealing with people's money. And now if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant, let's say, in a large corporation, it's not their money, right? It's different. Right. This is small business and small business very close to the the revenues, very close to the wallet of the of the owner. So it you have right. to deal with all these money issues. So building that trust and that relationship is incredibly important, which is a long game. And so yeah. I've met people that have said, oh, you know, I tried B&I and it wasn't successful. And usually when I ask what happened, it's because they they didn't stay in it long enough. It's not a short-term game. It's a long-term game. And so let's talk a little bit about how to be successful inside of a, a BNI. Because I, I would imagine that it, not every group is the same and you've got to you know, maybe date a little bit, a few different groups to find people that you connect with. But I'd love to hear your take on this. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I think you do need to look around and, and, and find a group that is a good fit for you, that, that you like the people. These are people that you could see yourself doing business with and referring. You know, if you, if you go to a group, any group, any networking group, and you don't feel comfortable with the with the majority of the people there, then that's not the place you want to be. So it definitely starts there. Now, let's say you find a group that, and now when you find one, don't blink. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, you, when you're at a group and you go, I like these people, that I think I could work with these people, then, then pull the trigger and, and, and participate, and, and join, and then really actively participate. You have to be uh, fully engaged in the process. One of the first things I recommend that people do is do effective one-to-ones with every single member. Uh, You're talking about BNI specifically, every single member of a BNI chapter. So, and you can do one one a week. And if you're in a 40-member chapter, it's going to take you a year. Mm. It's going to take you a year. And by the time you've hit all the 40 people that were in the chapter, then there's probably two or three new people, four or five, six new people in the group. So you're going to have to do them. It'll take you the better part of a year for you to do these one-to-ones. Now, the one-to-ones 
need to be very focused. They can't be, you know, the purpose of the one-to-ones are not just to socialize, although socializing is part of the relationship building process, but they should also be focused. I have a a process in BNI. It's it's out of a book I wrote called Business by Referral, and it's called the Gains Exchange. And this is what I recommend that people do when they do the one the one to one. They exchange their gains information, and that's an acronym. It stands for goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills. Goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills. So. What happens is you sit down and, and I tell you what my goals, accomplishments, interests, networks, and skills are, preferably in writing. I give it to you. And you do the same for me. Now, the value of this is that the truth is it's the overlapping areas of interest where we make a connection. And when you make a connection, that's where you start to build a relationship. And when you build that relationship, that's when you start passing referrals. So the, the purpose of a gains exchange is to find connections. And if you do that with everyone in the group, you're really going deep and building relationships quicker. If your network is a mile wide and an inch deep, it will never be successful. It has to both be wide and deep in places. Yeah, fantastic. I absolutely love the gains philosophy and something to, uh, as a listener, to write down and actually come up with those gains for yourself and use them anywhere in life, quite frankly. We actually inside of our community, we talk about the seven secrets of marketing your bookkeeping business. And one of the secrets is definitely being involved. We call it networking, but the the main game here is is definitely BNI. And we have such amazing success stories from our our members and and, uh, customers all over the world. We're we're talking like, uh, you know, filling up their entire dance card just from working inside of a a BNI. Now, one of the other things that we say is don't put all your eggs in one basket. I don't want to get that across, but this is definitely one of the big baskets you want to have your egg in for sure. And we actually have a whole bunch of resources and tools that we provide for what are some of the things you should talk about? How can you, you know, get inside of a conversation with people, you know, these meetings that you're talking about, how those meetings should run. So what I'll do Ivan, on this, and for the listeners, if you go and and get into the community and all of our free resources and bonuses, we'll put a copy of that so people can get access to that. And I'll make sure we write up that gains uh, bit as well as all the links to your books and different things that you've talked about today, because there've been some real, real valuable stuff that you've you've given us so far. I, I do want to ask a few more questions, and I know we're sure. we're getting a little long here, but. Um, it's what when I have a person that's giving so many value bombs, I, I'm going to start to tear up if you if you if we have to end it. You know <laughs> what what can people do in terms of you know assessing the group? Like you said, like they go in and they and they're a little bit maybe they don't feel comfortable or uh, they do feel comfortable. What what do you see like when a person comes in? What should they be looking for when they walk in through that door? You talked about body language before. What does have you seen that has been this great environment uh, for for a great group? So I would say four things, and I'll, I'll give you all four and touch on them a little deeper. The quality of the group, the quantity of the members, the engagement of the members, and the stories they tell. Those are the four things that will tell me whether this is a good group or not. First begins with quality. Are they quality business professionals? And you can you can get a sense of that fairly quickly uh, by having a conversation, certainly a couple of meetings. You have a sense of how good these people are at what they do uh, from hearing other people. Because one of the things in BNI that we do is people give testimonials about each other. And so when you're hearing really strong testimonials, that's good. The quantity of people, look, if you're in a room of 16 people, you're just not going to generate a lot of business. There's a concept I call the squared connection effect, where 16 people actually have 256 connections, 16 by 16. And so I call it the squared connection effect. Uh, But here's something interesting. 32 people have something like 1,054 connections. Wow. So when you double your size, you quadruple the connections that you've got amongst one another. So you really want to look for a group that's, I would recommend, at least 25 to 30 members. If you can find a chapter of 40 or 50 members and it, and it clicks off on the first cylinder that 
their quality. Now they're a, a decent size and they're highly engaged, really engaged in the meeting and the chapter and what's going on and listen to the stories they tell. Listen to what they have to say about the program and how it's impacted them, both personally and professionally. Those are the four things that tell me whether it's a great group. And those are the four things I tell groups to do to be great. Yeah, it makes total sense. You know, I think this episode so far has just been really fantastic and educational to have people be inspired to, to go and to check this out and to make this a part of what they do. Now, there's one thing I have noticed about bookkeepers is in working with, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of them all over all over the world is that, you know, they might be a little hesitant to do some things that are, are new or, or outside of their comfort zone. Like one of the things is in our program, we offer coaching and it's like, you know, geez, that no one was booking a call with me. And mm-hmm. I was like, I started reaching out and I said, you know, why, why, you know, this is part of the program and it's for you. And it's like, well, I was just afraid. I didn't know what it would be like. I didn't know uh, I was uncertain. And so I did a lot of work to figure out, you know, to make them feel comfortable and safe and, and all that so that they would take, take up on these, this valuable resource. I think people that are listening might think, oh, I want to do this, but they're afraid. How can we set them up to feel empowered, to go to that first meeting or to reach out and 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 uh, go onto your website and and go and get involved in this. What what's some some ideas? It is a great great point. So first let me address it conceptually and then let me give you, uh, everyone a suggestion. Um, there's an old Chinese proverb and I I love this proverb. It's uh, when's the best time to plant an oak tree? And the answer is 25 years ago. The the Second part of it is when's the next best time? And the answer is today. So what happens is I see a lot of people who haven't done what they, they, they've come to the recognition that they, they probably should have been doing these things and they haven't. And so release yourself from that anxiety. Recognizing that you haven't done it is really the first step. And so the second step is to do it. And that means you need to go out and actually start doing the things that we're talking about here. Just just us, just us, listening to us is only the first step. You recognize the issue. Now you have to do something about it. My advice would be either talk to another bookkeeper friend that you have that you know might not feel like they're competition to you because maybe they're a little further away or talk to a, someone you really trust and ask them about a local BNI chapter or you mentioned other groups. Chambers can be excellent. Service clubs like Rotary, Lions, Kiwanis, ask people you know and trust about networks that they belong to and go visit. Don't make a decision to join. Just just go visit and assess the group based on what I was talking about. So first step, you got to make this decision and you got to do it today. The second step, if you make that decision, is do it by referral. Don't just wing it. You can go to our website, bni.com, but I'd recommend you talk to somebody. The best way to join a network is, oh my goodness, what a great idea, by referral. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And, you know, as you were speaking, I, I, I started to think of one of the massive benefits of doing something like this is that we're, you know, our community is all about building a successful bookkeeping business, one that you love, one that you have fun in, one that you make really great money doing. And I, I, a lot of people out there uh, that are listening are probably busy, right? They're busy with work. They have, you know, probably no enough clients. They're busy, but they're not making enough money. They're not charging yeah. enough. And their business isn't really growing. And the right. reason I think that that's happening is a lot of the times people are just taking all the business that comes their way, whatever way that it comes. And it's kind yes. of, you know, if you do bookkeeping and someone finds out you're good, they'll refer you business. The idea here, the big opportunity here is to get out of those safe harbors and go out and find great other great business people that have connect or that are connected to great other businesses that can be fantastic clients that can create demand on your business that then enables you and empowers you to raise up the rates that you charge and the value right. 
that, that comes more in line with the value that you have to offer. And it will naturally propel you forward where you have a better business and a, a more holistic business. And I would say that there's no better place than to do this out there in great community groups. You listed a number of them, the Chamber of Commerce, Rotary. But BNI, really, I mean, across the board, it is highly recommended by all of our, the community members, so many community members, it really is a great opportunity. And that's why today's episode for sure has been just an absolute pleasure because you've given so many value bombs that I just, uh, we're going to get this transcribed and put that as well up onto the, the website because there's so many great nuggets that you've given people today. Well, Michael, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I think one of the most important things I've learned in the last 32 years of running the world's largest business networking organization is that networking is more about farming than it is about hunting, that it's about cultivating relationships with other business professionals. Uh, That's what really, really makes it work. And if your listeners would like to see more about what I write about uh, they can go to my blog at ivanmeisner.com. That's I-V-A-N Meisner, M-I-S-N-E-R, ivanmeisner.com. D- literally been it's 10 years I've been blogging. So there's lots of content up there uh, at ivanmeisner.com, all free stuff. And of course, bni.com. So thank you, Michael. Excellent. It's been a real pleasure. As I mentioned, we're going to have, if you if you're on your your iPhone or your smartphone or wherever you're at listening to this, just click on the link below and you will go directly to all the links that Ivan has shared with us today. And so you can access his website and the different books that he's been talking about. This is a real opportunity and I really encourage everyone listening to to take this on, embrace this, and you will reap the rewards, speaking from a, a farming perspective. It's been excellent having you on the show today. And uh, we hope to have you someday in the future. We'll invite you back to to have more value bombs. I'm sure you've got hundreds and thousands of more of them. I've, I've got a few more. And I have found the video we talked about. It was uh, from BNI Torino in Italy. There's no word spoken. I'll send you the link. I Great. think if you like sliding doors, you'll love that video. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks. That wraps another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper podcast. To learn more about today's guest and what a great guest he's been and to access all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.